All right, we'll get started again. SPF from Mr. DePape. Did I pronounce your name right? Oh, thank God. <laughs> All right, we got our, our last book giveaway. Grant C. Tom Hole is no longer eligible. This one, this one's uh, this this trivia question from the Matrix. Uh, the name of the actor who played Morpheus. Morgan Freeman. I think I already know. All right. All right, without that, with that. Uh, my name is Matt Pape, and the title of my talk is uh, SPF, Discouraging uh, Spammers from uh, Spoofing Your Domain. So, who am I? Uh, well, I've worked in the uh, IT sector for nine years. Uh, I've done several implementation and migrate migrations from various email systems. And uh, more times than not, whenever I've uh, picked up new uh, clients, Either I've seen it misconfigured, uh, SPF records uh, misconfigured, non-existent, or that they just don't work. Um, so, first, what is SPF? Well, the definition uh, is uh, the Center Policy Framework is an email authentication protocol that allows the owner of a domain to specify which mail servers they use to send email from uh, their own do domains. Basically, what that is is it's a record that says hey, uh, if you receive email from me, it's going to come from these hosts or these IP addresses or uh, this is where it's coming from. Uh, the RFC uh, was published uh, in April 28, 2006. Uh, it became a proposed standard in April 2014, and the uh, RFC number is 7208. And uh, like I said, uh, what it basically what it is is it's a DNS record that's uh, a TXT record and uh, keep in mind uh, that the max that that can be for it to be valid is 255 characters. So why? Well, it's fairly easy to implement once you understand how to build that record. Uh, other organizations uh, may not accept email from you without one. Uh, I've seen that a few times. Or uh, also, your email will have uh, lower uh, spam assassin and spam scores. So if you're familiar with uh, Spam Assassin, is it gives uh, a, a grading uh, based on the email that it comes in that it uh, looks at. Uh, if you don't have it, your Spam Assassin score will actually go up uh, and higher the number, the more likely that it is to mark your email as spam. So it won't be delivered to uh, the recipient's uh, mailbox. Uh, this also deters spammers uh, from using uh, your domain in spoofed emails. It doesn't necessarily mean that they won't. Uh, but uh, a lot of them will look and see, okay, that, that exists, and they would decide not to uh, use your domain. Uh, it reduces the number of uh, le legitimate emails flagged as spam. Again, that kind of goes back with the, the scoring of the spam and whatnot. And then uh, also, uh, your users' emails are more likely to be delivered uh, to the recipients that they uh, send them to, and you want to make just make the internet better. So. To understand SPF, you kind of need to understand how does uh, it work when you click uh, send an email to someone. So in this scenario, we have Alice and Bob. So Alice has her MUA or mail user agent, as you can see. Uh, typically, it's just an email client, Outlook, Thunderbird, OA, whatever you want, uh, whatever they use, whatever you use. That goes to um, to your mail server or an MTA. Uh, and then from there, your MTA does not know, may not know where to send that email. So what that does is it uh, goes out to a DNS server, checks the MX record, and from that it may get multiple responses back. Uh, with those responses, there are certain pri uh, priorities that come with that. The lower the number, the higher the priority. So it's going to try and go through each one of those until it can actually send it. Uh, again, sorry, this is uh, just a real basic scenario. I mean. It could be uh, set up many different ways, uh, but from there it goes out to the cloud. Blah blah. blah. Uh, there it goes to the recipient's uh, MTA again, just another email system. And at this step five is where the actual SPF check happens. From there it goes to the mail delivery agent, and then after that, uh, Bob gets the email in their mailbox. It uh, may go to their client or uh, web browser. And if that happens, they may hear something in their, uh, on their computer, such as, 
Okay, that didn't work. But it was that you got mail. <laughs> so, how do attackers spoof email or send spam? Well, emails contain two from addresses in, in the headers when it's actually received to the recipient. The first type is called an envelope from. This address uh, is contained in the return path field. Uh, this is what SPF actually checks uh, when, when, when it does that check. You can find this in the headers. This is uh, uh, just one that I pulled from uh, like a week ago, uh, so that is legit. Uh, the other type of from address that you'll see is called the header from. Uh, this is uh, located in the from field, uh, return path and from field. You'll see this in your email client and also in the headers. Uh, this would be in the header. It kind of, you know, they, it, these may be uh, the same or separate, but then this is what showed up in my email client. Uh, both of these are easily spoofed and sent through email systems and end up as uh, unsolicited both. So when they're spoofed, you know, they could be using a, a open email or open uh, uh, email system and whatnot, or they um, may just be spoofing it. So this uh, slide here shows the actual SPF check process. Uh, this is step five of that uh, uh, first uh, uh, diagram. So from here, we have this IP address, one, two, three, four. That's the uh, IP address of the mail server. It sends it out. It has that return path of bounces at example.com. That is included in the headers, of course. It goes to the recipient's email server. They receive it. They extract that return path, the address, and then from there, they see the domain. That domain is example.com. From there, it goes out. It does an actual SPF check uh, through DNS, and it comes back, and it will get that record, and it will check, okay, is one, two, three, four, allowed to send email and depending on yes or no okay if it passes it will then you know pass it on or uh, potentially it could be marked as spam and passed or it may just not deliver it at all so now that we talked about how it works let's talk about how to build or read an spf record so in this first example um, this is just one that i found online uh, this is a really generic example as you can see so that first portion, this tells us that's an SPF version type one record. The second portion of that example shows that, okay, this is the IP address of uh, uh, the, uh, this is the, the IP addresses or, uh, insider notation um, that are allowed uh, to send email uh, from that domain. So it'll look at it if, uh, if the, the uh, email system that you send does not match this, then it, the SPF record does fail. And then finally is the uh, dash all. This is what a lot of people sometimes get hung up on. Uh, this is always the rightmost portion of the record. It's called the rejection mechanism. There's four types. The first type that this one uses is that dash all. So what it says is if an email comes from a server that does not match this portion or match this record, that it should be dropped. It should, uh, it, it, it should not, re or it should reject uh, that email. Then uh, the other uh, second type is, is the plus all. This basically says that regardless of what's here, it's still going to accept it, and it, from there, it's up to the email system what it wants to do. There's the tilde all, which is a soft fail. Uh, basically, what that says is if it fails the check. It, it's up to the recipient's email system on what they want to do with it. So they could potentially flag it as spam. They could decide not to deliver it. It's up to however that system's configured and however what they want to do. And then finally is the question mark all, and uh, that accepts the record, but uh, you, you really can't say anything about what it's uh, what that what it does. So another example we have that you might see is. Uh, Oops, I forgot the, uh, the uh, rejection mechanism there. But uh, is this redirect, right? This redirect tells the recipient email server to redirect that SPF check to the domain listed. So uh, if this had that rejection mechanism, this would be a valid uh, SPF record. So what it would say is, OK, uh, we use uh, G Suite or uh, Gmail or Google's mail service uh, to send our email go out to their uh, uh, SPF record 
and do that check. And then that way, they're able to manage and say, OK, this is where our emails are going to come from. Because you, as a, as a customer or as a user, you don't dictate what servers those come from. Another example uh, in this uh, is the inc another include. Uh, so if you have multiple domains, let's say you're a large organization or you have multiple domains. So for instance, Microsoft, let's say you wanted to allow uh, Microsoft.com, Outlook.com, and set those uh, uh, domains to be accepted as email, you could set up the double <coughs> So these are just some of the common mistakes that I've seen uh, out in the wild and in the past. Uh, there are tools available that when you craft uh, your SPF records, you can actually put them in, and it will say, OK, here's uh, you know, the IP addresses or domains that match. And you can even, on some of them, say, here's where my mail server's at. Does this actually match that record? Uh, so oops, on the first one, uh, does anybody have any idea see what's wrong with that first one Double yeah I kind of gave that one away <laughs> so I see this a lot it really depends on uh, the DNS provider or what you're using for DNS uh, some of them do require quotes some of them don't uh, depending on who your provider is you really need to just check that documentation and make sure that okay is this allowed or is it not uh, does anyone see what might be going on with this second uh, mistake The underscore or SPF. <clears throat> so this one's kind of tricky. The formatting's a little bit tough on it. You can't have two SPF records. So what, in order for this to work, you would have to combine it. So you just add that include up. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. On the third one, uh, do you see any mistake or anything that just looks kind of funky that it maybe it should or shouldn't, or why you wouldn't want to use uh, use Let this? Anybody Exactly. So this will allow any mail. It, the record's basically useless, so why even have it, right? I've seen that a few times as well. Um, okay, I've got one more slide of uh, mistakes. Uh, does anybody see what might be wrong with uh, this record? That all has to be last. Correct. Yes, that all always has to be the last. Um, or the rightmost of that record. I have a question on that. Yes. On that one, I'm good. On which one? The top one? Yeah. Yes. So if it was legit, does it have to match the IP range and the domain name? No. no. It's all basically an or. So okay. it's like, yeah. Um, does anybody see what may be right or wrong or misconfigured on this last one? No. Squeeze that right. Okay, yep, uh, that, but I did not intentionally do that. <laughs> <laughs> Two errors on that. Yeah. So while this one is, it is misconfigured because I didn't catch that, uh, you can use that CIDR, CIDR uh, notation, and we can shrink that record into something like this. So keep that in mind. So just a few gotchas uh, as you're uh, building your records uh, and whatnot or uh, taking a look to see what you currently have, think about shared hosting. So let's say uh, you use uh, some web hosts online. They use vhost, and you share an IP address with other people on, on, on the Internet. If you advertise that IP address, uh, potentially anyone else using that IP address could send mail and uh, uh, spoof your domain and pretend that that, that that mail is coming from you. So keep that in mind. Uh, if you have large organizations, uh, with that include, um, you can only have up to 10 domains. So keep that in mind as well. A way to, uh, that to help with that, uh, I didn't go into it, it as a little bit more advanced than I wanted to get for this talk, but definitely read into it as it's called, uh, you can set up macros. And within that, it will actually go into the headers. And you can ch check domains based on headers and whatnot and where those are actually coming. Uh, this happens all the time that I see. So let's say you do a migration or you set up a new mail server uh, that is you know, uh, advertised out in the internet. If, if you have an SPF record and you forget that, your mail is going to show up as spam because you did not change that record. right? So keep that in mind. Uh, another gotcha is, well, if let's say they have an older mail system, 
if they don't check the SPF record. There's really nothing that you can do, um, but hopefully they update or find some other uh, email system that they could use that would utilize this. Um, another thing that I see, so if you use anything like MailChimp, Constant Contact, any of those, any type of mail service that forwards your mail, that <coughs> will break your SPF record. So you will need to include that in the record as well. And then finally, uh, if you, I mean, if you're going to do an a email migration or anything like that, uh, you definitely want to set your TTL values to a very uh, low number. Uh, that way it, it, it propagates out through the internet quicker. Um, another thing I did not include it on here to uh, keep in uh, mind as you're doing it is uh, if we go back um, through the tilde uh, with the, uh, the tilde all, it's a decent way, obviously set your TTLs down to a, uh, a, a lower number, um, but use that tilde to just kind of test. And you can see, okay, send an email to, you know, your personal email or something that leads your email system to do kind of a test to see, okay, does it actually pass uh, this S SPF check? Uh, when you, if you pull up uh, on most email systems, when it's delivered to your mailbox, if you bring it up in your email client or you know through your or web client, as long as you can get a hold of those headers, you can see whether or not that that SPF record uh, from the other domain passed or not. So that's a good way to, if you're trying to implement it, uh, you can use that uh, tilde all, and that'll let you kind of test it. Because, yeah. So. Uh, Final notes, I wanted to keep it kind of short to get you guys out of here, but if you have a domain that you're using for testing or that you know will never send email, uh, please consider the record below. Uh, and per the RFC, it is considered a well-established best practice. Uh, does anybody have any idea what this uh, record means or what it might do? Don't accept yeah, don't accept anything from my domain. So keep that in mind. Other than that, does anyone have any questions or? Concerns. Yep. So you're telling the you know, the recipient MTA, this is what I want you to do based on the you know my SPF record. But how are how are different MTAs handling that? I mean, is it part of the RFC that they have to follow that, or is it just kind of so generally they'll follow but some won't? It's it's uh, it's up to the email system. What it will get is the error, so they may get a perm error or a uh, I can't remember the other. It's an RFC. Uh, but really it is up to them, uh, or that, let's say you have a spam uh, uh, filter or something sitting out front, it is really up to them how they handle that. Um, any other questions? What's the maximum number of included expansions? Uh, it was 10, I believe. I don't know, you, I, I, I don't know for sure, but uh, check that. Was that correct? So I think it's 8 or 10. 8 or 10. And Except for IP addresses, I think you can go in one detail. Up to two, that 255 character uh, for your text record. Um, do keep in mind uh, another gotcha that I just thought of. Uh, if you let's say you do go to Office 365 or Exchange Online, um, some or even uh, G Suite uh, with those includes some. Uh, they used to have multiple includes that you would have to use, so that you could burn those up very quickly. Uh, some of them I think required three or four of them at one point. I think they've kind of shrunk that down. Uh, but that's one thing to keep in mind as you're crafting that. Any other questions? Yep. Yeah. No, go ahead. Oh, you're good. Go ahead. How does this tie into DTM and DMARC? It is, like, is SPF required to then move, uh, you know, in the layer protocols, or could you basically, in some cases, skip that SIFF one because people are moving to DTM and DMARC? So that would, uh, I would uh, like to give a talk on that, or if you want to give a talk on that. Uh, my understanding of DKIM is it actually checks the actual message that it validates that, okay, was this the message that was sent from that server? This checks where did it come from. DKIM uh, checks the actual message itself. Zach? What's your best practices for taking a look at this utilization? Like how often should you be keeping eyes on it? Um, I mean, and that's the thing. So another thing to keep in mind, a lot of websites nowadays have contact forms, so I mean, keep that in mind. It's a, you should be, you know, auditing your system at least or at least network once a year, 
um, seeing, okay, where, you know, what is actually sending mail on our behalf? Does it need to? Can we have it come from somewhere else that, you know, that we, that's a little bit uh, easier to manage or that is manageable, I would say, at least once a year. I mean, if you, if you have time quarterly or, you know, definitely. Sure. Yep. For the redirect, is there a redirect, redirect route possible? So, redirect to another domain for the SPF record? So, that redirects back to another domain, domain and you get the redirect? Potentially get into a cycle? Right. Um, I think I'm not sure though. I've never run into that. I've never tried that. That would be something to try actually. Just register two domains and. But when you get to work tomorrow, give it a shot and let us know. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Put it in the Slack channel. <laughs> yep. Uh, so in the, the SPF uh, records, I guess you can you mix and match whether it's uh, like an IP, uh, like a pointer record lookup for validation, an A record lookup. So you can't, okay, so two things. One, per the RFC, don't use a pointer. Uh, they actually say in the RFC, do not use that. But you can use DNS records in your SPF record. So if you know that, okay, you have a bunch of A records in your zone file and they're all going to send mail, uh, then yes, you can just uh, put in, for instance, um, IP. You could do uh, SPF1A space A space and then whatever after. So if anything comes from that A record uh, in your zone file, then it will accept that mail. Yes, you can do that. You can do it with MX uh, and then, I mean, any any type of So if you can mix and match them, is there a precedent? <coughs> uh, Which one is selected for validate first? Is it an any, you could say, with a, a, a core? That I don't know. My assumption, and this is just an assumption, as I assume it just reads it uh, left to right, left but right. yeah. Any of them match the five? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if, if, it's, if it's not on the host, then it's yeah. Yep. All right. Any other questions or how do you how do you protect against uh, bad guys learning more and more about your uh, infrastructure? So that is uh, one another gotcha. Um, so you are advertising. Okay, this is where my emails are coming from. Uh, I mean, that's one thing you need to keep in mind. So obviously keep your systems up to date, keep them secure. Uh, I mean, that, that, that's really the best that I can tell you, you know. Yep. How's it broadcast? So how, like, how would an attacker know that? Um, so, I mean, you could try, you can uh, pull the zone file down. You can use, uh, you know, on Windows NS lookup, you can actually say uh, the certain type of record that you want to do or in uh, Linux as well. Um, there's, like I said, there's tools online. One that I like that works really well is called dnsdumpster.com. It just, it just pulls its own file and it makes a nice little graphs for you and shows where everything's at. Yeah. Yeah, so you just do uh, Q equals uh, TXT. Yep. Typically, yeah, or, or I'm at lookup, or uh, you do like dig txt yep. and then the domain name, and all you do is just, just that. Yep, it'll dump. Yep, like you said, just the txt records. All right, if that's it, then. Go ahead. All right, no more talking.